There was a huge anti-war movement and the debate was furious. It was at times ugly. People were being arrested. People who had the slightest connection with China were having files opened on them by ASIO. Although the war was in Vietnam and uh, it was Vietnamese we were fighting, uh, the government said, this is China. So in effect, by this construction, we were at war with China. Whitlam's decision to travel to China from opposition in 71 was a courageous move. Australia didn't know much about its own region at that point in time. Domestic politics was operating in the context or with a culture of fear. And I think he sensed the tide was turning. An opportunity arose over trade, actually. Despite the hostility and the fear-mongering uh, and enmity, um, Australia had quietly been trading with China, including selling wheat. And at the end of 1970, uh, the Wheat Board returned from an attempted negotiation empty-handed. The Labor Party thought, here's an opportunity to go to Beijing and find out what this is all about and is there a way that we can resolve this. The first day in Peking, and already the ALP delegation knows that Australian wheat sales to China are tied to diplomatic recognition. For the Chinese, trade and politics go hand in hand. In Whitlam's mind, uh, this was an opportunity for a much broader discussion about the whole nature of our relations and diplomatic recognition. Whitlam wanted to secure an understanding that uh, if he became the Prime Minister, we could have diplomatic relations. And he secured that understanding from the Chinese uh, Prime Minister. He also, in discussions with the Trade Minister, was able to sort out how the, tr the wheat trade issue could be resolved. And the underlying significance of this was that across the board, he had opened up the possibility for a range of um, engagement with China and changed the whole way people thought about China. On the 5th of July, this is actually the day that he had that historic interview with Zhou Enlai. I confess that there have already been more historic letters on this mission. Stephen has been sent at the Foreign Office the first letter from an Australian in China to that address in his lifetime. Jason will make a fortune from it. Cathy has been sent the first letter to Frencham from China in history. In terms of whether it was a success, Goff says, and I quote, the measure of the success of the Australian Labor Party mission to China is the hysteria it has produced within the Liberal Party. So I think that's a fairly strong confirmation from his side that the visit had gone well domestically for him and the ALP. Well, Mr Whitlam, your conclusions at the end of this, what could be a very historic trip? I think from Australia's point of view, the great significance of our delegation to China has been that the Australian people were caught less by surprise when President Nixon also decided to go to China than they would otherwise have been. The Australian people have had more information on China in the last month than they'd had for more than 20 years. At the end of uh, 1972, on the second day after the election, the officials from the Department of Foreign Affairs went uh, to his office and he gave instructions for our ambassador in Paris to open negotiations with the Chinese ambassador in Paris to establish diplomatic relations. Who would have thought a mere two years ago that an Australian Prime Minister would receive such a welcome as this in China? But this is a special welcome, a welcome that President Nixon didn't get when he came here on his history-making visit in 1971. So I think Goff's 71 visit to China really established Australia as a relevant player 
in our region and an important partner for the Chinese government at that time. And I think that that legacy really established the beginning of that bilateral relationship in a meaningful sense. That is now quite a long-standing relationship that I hope we can make sure stays on track as we move forward.